Hello, I'm Laura McCarry at The Hidden Edge with another tea break tip on how to use business models and tools to help you manage your growing business. Today, we're looking at Burke and Litwin's Drivers for Change in relation to your business review. I'm a firm believer in the annual business appraisal at your year end, whenever that might be. In addition to checking your financial results, though, it's a great time to review the whole of your business. I particularly like Burke and Litwin's model as a framework. It looks quite complicated at first, but what they've done is split the review into bite-sized chunks. So let's have a look at what the model looks like. You will notice, as I said, it's quite a complex model, but those aspects are all interlinked and when there is an, a change in one particular area it will have an impact on all of the other areas in the business too. As you can see this model has been colour coded. There are three significant factors that need to be considered. The transformational factors are the ones that are dealt with by the strategic management. The transactional factors are the aspects that need to be considered by operational management. And the individual and personal, and personal factors are those which need to be looked at by staff management. So let's look at them in a bit more detail. The external environment. This includes factors such as markets, legislation, competition and the economy. All of these will have consequences for your business and you as the business leader. It is vital that you release for issues that may affect you and your team. For example, the budget, Brexit and business rates. Mission and strategy. A business's mission articulates its reason for existing. The strategy sets out how the organisation will go about achieving its mission. It will be developed in light of environmental change. And you will need to understand the change in strategy and be able to communicate the implications to your staff. Leadership. This considers the business attitudes and behaviours of you and your senior colleagues. And how these behaviours are perceived by the business as a whole. The way in which change is implemented and accepted through the business will be largely influenced by yourselves. Business culture can be described as the way we do things around here. It considers the beliefs, the behaviours, the values and conventions that prevail in your business. Culture change does not happen overnight. It evolves over time as a result of many changes in your business. Management practices. As a manager, you should keep in mind the desired state of the business in terms of how you expect people to behave and not to behave and what your business values as important. You, as a manager, not only needs to talk the talk, but walk the walk too. Structure. Very often the changes in strategies can lead to changes in the way that the business is structured. This can have an impact on relationship responsibilities and the ways of working. Your job is to assess what impact of that structural change will be and to ensure that your team understands why it is required and what it means for them. The systems and processes evolve over time and can result in red tape. It's important to look at what's been put into place to make sure that it is still relevant and considered. Do they meet the purpose of the legislation, the ethical and moral values of your business? 
the work unit climate. This considers employees' perceptions of their immediate colleagues and working environment. The working environment is often what shapes our view of the business as a whole and influences the extent to which we feel satisfied in our jobs. Changes to the immediate working environment need to be managed sensitively as they are likely to invoke a, invoke a range of emotional and political responses from staff. Task requirements and the individual skills and abilities. Change in the business will often require change in the work carried out and the skills available in the team. You need to assess whether all the right skills are in the place and if they can be developed or if you need to bring them in from outside. Individual needs and values. Changes to team membership can mean a change in the team dynamics. It would be great in a perfect world if we could recruit exactly the exact fit for our teams in, in terms of style, abilities and skills mix. In reality, that's not always possible. And it's your job to identify any risks in this area and mitigate them as best you can. Employee motivation. This is about considering the significance of individual and organisational goals. Motivation is key to effective change. The real challenge is to maintain motivation throughout any change period, particularly when change is not well received by those that are affected. And finally, performance. That's the individual and organisational performance, which is affected by all of those aspects within individual and personal factors and the business as a whole. Berg and Litwin's theory requires you to ask a series of questions at each level. Based on the answers you get, you must decide what change is required and develop a suitable implement implementation strategy. I've made it a little bit simpler by using this template. First, on the left hand side, we have the levels, external environment, strategic management, operational management and staff management. And the drivers that Burke and Litwin identified that links into those. And now I've identified some tools that will help you. So level one, the external environment, where these are the political, economic, social and technological developments that prompt change. The Peston analysis adds two more extras, the environmental and legislation. To help us with strategic management, the mission and strategy, leadership and culture, I'm recommending we look at doing a power SWOT. You may recall a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. But when you add power to it, you look at the strategies that come out from that SWOT analysis. Then in order to look at your operational management, I recommend that you use a business strategy canvas that will help you to link the mission strategies and culture and leadership into the structure, systems, practices and climate of your organisation. And finally, in order to look at the staff management, we need to have a big picture and I'm recommending a skills need analysis that sits alongside Griner's growth model. So that's Burke and Litwin's drivers for change model. Have a go, apply the principles to your business this financial year end. Do download the templates from the Hidden Edge website and do share your stories there for my portfolio of small business case studies. So that's it from me. Until next time, enjoy the rest of this tea break.